Yeah, any political party, uh, the primary aim is getting into power. UNP for last one decade, more than one decade, we were in the opposition and we wanted a fresh leaf, lease of life. So the convention uh, marked the uh, turning point of our change. Uh, there was uh, demand as well as discussion within the organization. We need a new structure and a new decision making process uh, in order to face next national elections. So the convention marked the, the point that we achieved that by amending certain very pertinent uh, clauses of the existing con uh, constitution. So it's a great achievement compared to last uh, 14 years. You know the leadership, uh, there is no leadership crisis as such, but what we want is, as I said earlier, uh, to face elections. We want to face election with new uh, vigor, new uh, uh, message. So in that respect, we have to think about new candidates who can bring the victory to the party. So in that sense, we want uh, uh, new, new candidates to win next election. Sajid uh, is a very popular leader uh, within the party and the convention has shown that uh, the, he is the popular choice of the party. So uh, not only that, as I said earlier, we need a new lease of life. I think Sajid can bring that enthusiasm as well as a new message to the party. I mean, I don't think so because uh, the, the new constitutional amendment says, uh, first of all, you must uh, put your candidacy in amicable manner. So, uh, once uh, the new uh, working committee convenes, anybody can come forward, including Sajit Premadasa, and uh, then uh, party has to decide which part of the decision making goes to Sajid and which part of the decision making goes to Mr. Anil Vikramasinghe. So in that sense, the so working committee has to develop an amicable solution to uh, bring this party into a more working mode. I mean, I feel that it is very I mean, unfounded and unnecessary allegations because the government's uh, debacle in Great Britain is entirely, uh, for, entirely due to the false and wrong policy, foreign policy of the government. So you need not to blame for another person or outsider for the, the errors committed by the government as well as the foreign ministry. So, this is to divert the attention and uh, save the government face, nothing else. LLRC, you know, my personal opinion is, now when it comes to reconciliation, uh, reconciliation is a phenomenon or uh, something, uh, the policy that normally take place after uh, resolving of a conflict. So it's a post-conflict policy. But what has happened in Sri Lanka is not a uh, post con uh, what we experiencing in Sri Lanka is not a post-conflict situation, it's, it's, it is a post-war situation. Now post-conflict situation you have a, the all parties are winners. But here we have one victor and one loser. In, uh, in such a situation, I don't think reconciliation will apply. But still, in order to delay the various uh, international processes, as well as hoodwink various allegations, government is pursuing this path. 
uh, other than uh, various representations and testimonies, I don't see that uh, this present government is prepared to uh, bring about any reconciled uh, political situation. That's why we see that sometimes we, ha we hear that the cabinet is saying uh, national anthem should be conducted only in Singhala. It's not uh, reconciliation, what we needed. Or we see that uh, certain cabinet memoranda to uh, uh, say that uh, provincial councils must follow the li line ministries. Likewise, when it comes to reconciliation, there are three aspects. One is political reconciliation. That is to address the political needs of the Tamil people in Sri Lankan context. But we, we don't see LLRC or the government is doing enough to address that aspect. Then, the second aspect of reconciliation is psychosocial reconciliation. Now, psychosocial reconciliation is that we know that hundreds of thousands of people have displaced and they were victims of this war. So, you need some sort of counselling, uh, some sort of psychological upliftment. But I, we don't see that kind of effort by the government. Then the third one is the victim-perpetrator reconciliation, which is much controversial aspect. Uh, I don't see a government is uh, trying to do anything for victims or to identify perpetrators. So in that sense, this whole uh, LLRC effort is a time-consuming and attention-diverting effort, nothing else. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look at the, uh, I mean, there are two aspects. One is rehabilitation of the uh, various, whatever the militants who took arms in this struggle. On the other hand, the displaced people, not only Tamils, Sinhalis also. Now, for instance, nobody is concerned about Sinhala population who were displaced in this whole war. I mean, they were also suffering. Then, on the other hand, livelihood. Now, dwellings or housing alone will not suffice to deal with this aspect, livelihood. You have to develop a proper economic uh, structure, infrastructure, as well as enabling environment to these people to flourish in the, such an environment. But we don't see in such a thing. Uh, that's uh, pathetic and terrible. I mean, there are so many views on that. My personal opinion is, uh, as an international law lawyer, as well as international affairs person who is involved with international uh, uh, relations, war crimes is not applicable for Sri Lanka. Because, one thing, we have not ratified as a country International Court of Criminal Justice. So, therefore, uh, international law aspect of war crimes cannot implement it against us. Secondly, if still the Security Council wants to establish a, a Security a Council a related uh, body to observe the matters like what has happened in Rwanda or what has happened in Bosnia Herzegovina, you need a Security Council mandate. But we know it's highly unlikely since the China and Russia uh, Security Council main veto power members are with us. It's very unlikely to establish a uh, war crime tribunal against Sri Lanka. So therefore this whole war crime scenario is non-happening situation. What is international community asking is how to deal with this reconciliation aspect, where, as I said earlier, what is government policy on this victim-perpetrator reconciliation? So for that, I think, uh, to advise the Secretary General, uh, he has appointed a panel which is entirely responsible for UN system, not for the government. In that respect, they have power to look into this aspect, how 
Sri Lanka should reconcile their own matters in respect of this area and then after their deliberations, uh, Secretary, uh, Secretary General can come forward with his policy framework. In that respect, I still feel government must represent them. Government must represent and give our version to this, that body. Secondly, since there is various politically motivated allegations against Sri Lankan state and the Sri Lankan armed forces, it's go go good. Not only the government present or incumbent state, but also the person like General Fonseca be allowed to explain his uh, experiences in this war. So in that respect, I, I have no worries or concerns about meeting uh, this panel with Sri Lankan government or whatever the uh, person in the Sri Lankan soil. What has happened actually, this was unproportionately blown, blown up by the politicians who have certain vested interests. So as a result, we have actually soured our relationships with the UN whole system. And also it is unprecedented to burn effigy of a United Nations Secretary General, which we have done in Sri Lanka. It's, it's shame and it's, it's, uh, it's unbecoming for a responsible state or a political party to do such things. You can beep up uh, ordinary people's uh, feelings in here, but by whipping up such feelings will bring unnecessary troubles for us in the uh, field of international relations. So, I feel that whole issue is still uh, a blunder committed by the government. So, in, in all what I can say that in respect of uh, earlier GSP plus, the way GSP plus was handled, the way we handle the, the Oxford Union debate, the way we are now handling the expert panel is uh, uh, very good testimony of Sri Lankan government's inability to develop a sustainable foreign policy, foreign uh, relations policy. I, I am a person who always stand for right of information. So, Wikileaks, if you look at the, 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 the particular papers they have uh, put forward, those are, none of those are classified documents, right? So, every country has their own laws, including Sri Lanka, to protect certain uh, government secrets. Other than that, uh, citizens are, uh, I mean, citizens have right to know what is their own government or their own representatives are doing. In that respect, I, I don't see Wikileaks is a big, uh, major controversy. It's, 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 uh, it's, they just put forward the normal correspondence between uh, second level diplomatic officer, officials and uh, state department or whatever the government. On, on Sri Lanka, I mean, they have their own right to hold such views. I mean, they are also collecting information as uh, embassies, so they can inter interpret uh, their own data according to their own way. So, it's uh, I, I feel now there are two or three allegations on very uh, formidable Tamil minister, uh, as well as uh, there is another opinion on the way the human rights were uh, protected or violated. So that is uh, their own view. As Professor G.L. Pires said in England, uh, quoting Voltaire, right to hold an opinion is the democracy. So we need, we need not to find fault with those opinions. I mean, national anthem issue is, it's pathetic and uh, we should not as a responsible government to say such a thing. 
but fortunately president has deferred uh, that aspect uh, by as in the cabinet and we know that cabinet memorandum cannot change the constitution constitution the annexure contains a standard melody of the national anthem and the language and also the language right is enshrined in the uh, chapter 4 of the constitution so i don't think that uh, cabinet or uh, interested uh, minister can change this established norm if we are trying to do so once again we are calling or in, uh, welcoming extremists within the tamil community to uh, crop up so therefore at at every cost we must defeat such an effort